Welcome to this video on the use cases for the CSRX. I am Mithun Hebar, product lead in the security group at Juniper Networks. Yeah, I will walk you through some of the scenarios where the CSRX will find its application. To recap, the CSRX is Juniper's container firewall, which supports greens, NAT, firewall, intrusion detection and prevention, and application security features. In addition, there is support for cloud-based antivirus and content security features as well, all delivered in a container form factor that can be deployed anywhere a Docker engine runs. I will begin with a generic firewall use case, that of a north-south firewall that finds application in data center environments, wherever they may reside. It could be the public cloud, or an on-prem data center with the ability to be deployed in either a virtual machine or a bare metal server with DPDK functionality. The CSRX is able to protect applications and other workloads residing in the data center environment. It leverages the functionality of next generation firewalls with IDP, application and, contain, and content security, all in a container form factor. The container firewall needs only two vCPUs in a non-reserved mode and four gigabytes of memory. Benefits of the CSRX in this scenario are, the CPUs are not reserved. And this means that other applications can run on the same VM or host as well. Horizontal scale can be achieved using automation to spin up new instances using Docker Compose, for example. Any load balancer deployed in the front end can effectively distribute the flows across the different CSRX instances as they come online based on the needs of the business. Agility comes built in. Boot up times are just a few seconds. Configs and licenses can be launched at, at load time, providing an excellent solution for highly dynamic environments in terms of performance and scale requirements. Just to reiterate, the use case benefits, protect application workloads from external threats, dynamic scale up and scale down of the CSRX as possible, load balancing across multiple CSRX instances can happen, and easy and quick setup and tear down of the instances is an advantage of being in a container form factor. Now here is an extension to the previous use case. The CSRX is deployed in a Kubernetes cluster, either as a single pod and as part of a deployment and replica set. When deployed in a Kubernetes environment, the container firewall needs the multi-CNI to attach multiple interfaces and the flannel or weave networking CNIs for enabling the creation of the overlay network. Incoming traffic from the internet hits the Nginx ingress controller or the network application load balancers in AWS, which route the traffic to the firewall service, which is running a scalable set of container firewall instances. NAT is performed on the traffic before it is forwarded onwards to the destination via a bridge that has been created for forwarding this traffic. The benefits of this use case are again threefold. Flexibility in deployment. It leverages the Kubernetes constructs of deployment, replica sets, config maps, volume mounts, etc. It is a container and can be deployed with the labels on select nodes, etc., just like any other container. Dynamic scale up and scale down of the CSRX based on predefined limits and the horizontal port autoscaler in Kubernetes. Ingress load balancer can be classic, the Nginx ingress load balancer, or network load balancer, or the application load balancer in AWS, combined with an easy and quick setup and tear down of the instances, bring in the agility in this scenario. Here, I have looked at the applications that are deployed within a Kubernetes cluster. However, these applications can be deployed outside the cluster too. As long as the applications are reachable with routes from the Kubernetes pod, they can be protected by the CSRX as deployed within the cluster. A very similar to the previous use case, only the location of the applications being protected changes here. 
The benefits of this use case are leverage the load balances in AWS to scale up and scale down the firewall instances almost instantly based on user-defined CPU limits. Advantages of a Kubernetes environment are leveraged in the protection of virtual or hardware-based application workloads. This could be in a Kubernetes cluster in AWS, such as EKS, or on-premises. Another use case is with East-West firewall protection. When the applications are deployed in an overlay network in Kubernetes, using Flannel and the multi-CNI, the CSRX can segment the network based on the network attachment definitions that were used in creating the workloads and the environment for the deployment of these applications. Here, each application workload needs to be deployed in its own network, connecting and routing the traffic through the CSRX revenue interface. With the support for up to 15 interfaces, one CSRX can segment up to 15 different networks. Zero trust between the application's traffic can be enforced by configuring application security on the CSRX, either through CLI, using NetConf, or even using the Juniper Security Director to manage the CSRXs. The out-of-band management port of the CSRX is exposed using node port in Kubernetes. In the topology shown here, the CSRX is deployed as a service similar to the other use cases. It is not mandatory to be deployed as a service, of course. It is possible to deploy a single container firewall and satisfy the same requirements. I've left this slide blank on purpose. The CSRX is versatile, flexible in its deployment style and lends itself very well to elasticity. With the requirements of just two vCPUs and four gigabytes of memory, it can be deployed in numerous scenarios with or without Kubernetes. What use case could you enable with the Juniper Container Firewall? Need to protect your IoT devices, medical equipment perhaps, or an oil and gas network deployment? Any low cost compute can be leveraged to deploy a powerful network firewall operating system. What use case will you use the CSRX in? In closing, I want to talk a little bit about the architecture of the CSRX. As you can see in the figure, the Docker instance contains the SRX PFE process, which is the SRX packet forwarding engine. It is responsible for the traffic forwarding function within the container and, and interacts with the other Juno's control demons, such as the management, network security, IDP, unified threat management, etc. The traffic from the physical NICs interfaces on the underlying hardware are bridged to the user space container using Linux bridges or Mac VLANs. Note that by default, each zero of the container is a management port and does not service revenue traffic. It can be used for managing the container via SSH by CLI or Juniper Security Director. ETH1, ETH2 through ETH16 translate to Kiki 000, 001, and all the way through to G0015 on the CSRX. Flexibility of the CSRX comes with the ability to be deployed in various hardware and software environments as long as there is a Docker engine available. Versatility is the varied number of use cases and applications of this container firewall. Try it out for yourself from the juniper.net trial website. In this video, we have seen the different use cases for the CSRX inside and outside of a Kubernetes cluster. Thank you for watching.